So in this video I'm going to show you how to make a double helical single turn antenna for the 2.4 gigahertz range and uh, it's quite a powerful little antenna for its size and I've also got a uh, pretty unique way of actually uh, protecting the elements of this antenna that turns out to be uh, quite professional looking. So the materials and methods that I'm going to use for this antenna is uh, pretty much the same as the 5.8 gigahertz double helical antenna so uh, if you've actually had a go at building one of these and you've got some of these materials left over then uh, you might want to try and have a go at uh, building uh, one of these little uh, antennas for your 2.4 gigahertz so to make this antenna the methods in this are exactly the same as the uh, 5.8 gigahertz it's just that uh, obviously it's a little bit bigger to uh, take account of the 2.4 gigahertz wavelength and what you're going to need to do is find yourself a piece of uh, rigid plastic tubing or uh, a wooden dowel something like that that's uh, 34 millimeters in diameter and download the template that uh, I'll leave a link in the description below and uh, again wrap it around the tubing like you did for the uh, 5.8 gigahertz and to actually make the coils for this antenna I'm going to be using the same wire as I used in the previous video this is uh, two millimeter galvanized steel fencing wire so like I said this uh, actual uh, helical antenna is only with one turn so you don't need uh, a massive amount of wire and uh, the method is exactly the same drill yourself a little hole at the uh, start of the coil in uh, whatever tube you find and then start bending the coils following the template around And I've just got my pliers here to hold the uh, actual wire nice and taut. I'm just going to use some tape just to hold it in place. And now we actually start the second coil. Just work your way around. And again, use some pliers, get it nice and tight, and then hold it in place with a little bit of tape. So I've got both coils wrapped around the tube now and what I'm going to do I'm going to cut away the first coil here because uh, they always tend to be the worst and same with the uh, bottom ending coils and I'm going to choose these two coils here because they look about uh, the straightest and uh, the uh, smoothest curve and what I'm going to do is wrap a little bit of tape around those two just to hold those two coils in place when I actually remove it off the uh, tube template. So I'm just actually wrapping the tape around the metal coils themselves and trying not to touch the uh, paper template on the tube. So it's just the coils I want to hold together. So I've cut the coils away from the tube now and the uh, tape is doing a good job of holding uh, the two coils together while I actually work on them. But uh, something else I'm going to do now is actually trim away this excess metal here that we don't want and I've got a thick piece of copper wire here and I'm going to solder that across uh, the two coils there act as a uh, support bar that will hold them in place while we actually work on them and then right at the end we can uh, actually remove this bar because we don't actually want it in the final build. So now we've fitted that bracing bar we can go ahead and remove the masking tape so we can actually see what we're going to be working with and uh, what I'm going to actually be doing now is soldering a piece of copper wire in this is uh, 20 SWG and uh, I'm going to be soldering it, soldering it in about there so we've got one complete turn on each coil and we're actually going to be soldering our SMA connector to this as well so this piece of copper wire is going to be staying in place at the end of the build so now what you actually want to do is use your bracing bar and your piece of copper wire and line it up by eye and then uh, snip away the excess coils that you don't actually want so I've got a thinner piece of copper wire soldered in there and cut away the excess coils that we don't actually need and uh, as you can see there we've got one complete turn of each coil and what we're going to have to do now is match the impedance of this antenna down to 50 ohms a helical antenna like this likes to run at around 150 ohms and that's no good for a Wi-Fi signal or any other kind of signal at 2.4 gigahertz it needs to be brought down to uh, 50 ohms to match the uh, coax and the easiest way that I find to actually do this there are a couple of different methods to actually do this is get yourself a uh, piece of metal tin 
and uh, you want to cut yourself a rectangle out 20 millimeters by 15 millimeters and then what I'm actually going to do is cut diagonally down here like this corner to corner so I've got two triangles and solder those in place on the helical antenna and that will match that impedance back down to 50 ohms. So I'm about to solder in my first metal shim and the key to this is actually uh, pre-soldering everything so I've pre-soldered the edge of the metal shim there and what I'm going to do just get my soldering iron and just uh, lay some solder along in that direction let it cool down swap it over remove this little clamp and then solder it onto the main coil here and you want to do it gradually as well you don't want to leave heat on there for too long because it will travel up the copper wire and probably end up desoldering away from this coil here And you want to make sure that you've got it uh, completely flooded with solder there. You don't want to leave any uh, little holes or little cracks in there because um, that's how a slot antenna works. So you could actually uh, impede the performance of your finished antenna if you don't uh, completely fill that in. So I've got the side soldered on there now. And what I'm going to do is get some uh, side cutters and just trim away the excess. And then get the Dremel tool with a sanding drum on and just uh, blend it in to the curve of that coil. So I've gone in there with a the Dremel tool and smoothed it off so it just matches the curvature of that coil so it blends in nicely. So now it's time to do the uh, second one. So that's this part of the antenna actually finished off and complete and if uh, I go back to where I told you the uh, actual uh, measurements of these shims the longer side here is actually 20 millimeters. So those of you that are following along at home will probably already realize that 20 plus 20 is 40 millimeters. Now, although we used a 34 millimeter tube to wrap our template around, we have got two millimeter wire. So that's 34 millimeters plus two millimeters plus two millimeters. That's 38 millimeters. And plus I also factor into this design that I get another two millimeters with the actual uh, wire itself expanding slightly it's not going to stay at exactly 34 millimeters when you remove it from the tube it will expand out slightly so if you've got all your measurements correct then these two metal shims should meet perfectly in the middle there at the points so to make the back reflect of this antenna I'm using the same method as I used in the uh, previous helical um, antenna video and what I've got is one of these cheap round saw adapters you can get for your drill here and I've got this one it's a 52 millimeter diameter saw and it will cut out a 50 millimeter round disc now the uh, back reflector for a particular helical antenna for 2.4 gigahertz again the same rule applies as the last video it needs to be at least one wavelength square so a 50 millimeter diameter round disc of copper is going to be plenty big enough for our reflector and to connect to this antenna I'm going to be using one of these little bulkhead SMA connectors that I used in the previous video and again instead of using little uh, nuts and bolts or screws to attach this I've roughed up the side so I can actually solder it in place directly to the copper clad board there. And again the fiberglass of this board is going to act as a uh, really nice insulator so we're keeping that reflector separate from the main body of the antenna so we don't have to worry too much about insulating it from uh, the reflector itself. So I've got the SMA connector soldered onto the back there and I can actually uh, tidy that up a little bit later but uh, the centre pin of this uh, SMA connector what I did I took a little uh, short length of uh, copper wire uh, 20 SWG and I soldered it in there trimmed it off and then what I did I got some uh, flat needle nose pliers and I flattened it out just so I've got uh, a nice big lump there that I can actually solder the uh, antenna directly onto so it'll have a much better stronger connection and then of course when we flood some epoxy in later that uh, will really add to the strength as well. So I've got the element held in place with some blue tack and what I'm going to do now is a little bit of solder on that pin there to solder it onto this uh, bottom bar.
So what I'm going to do now is remove this blue tack and uh, flood a little bit of epoxy glue underneath there. So the antenna is pretty much finished now, the uh, epoxy is set and uh, it's done a good job of holding them in place but uh, it's still quite fragile so I want something to actually go over the top of this to uh, protect it. Now as a stroke of luck when I was actually uh, prototyping these it turned out that the 50mm reflector here was the exact same diameter that uh, is found on the lids of many common aerosols and this is worldwide the uh, diameter of uh, these aerosol cans you know it doesn't matter what country you're in there, there will be companies that buy these in bulk and then uh, have them filled with their particular products so 50 millimeters is uh, really common and easy to get hold of now if you've got all your measurements correct and spot on what you can do is actually get your antenna put uh, a little drizzle of epoxy on the ends of the coils here and here because that'll stick to the um, inside of the uh, plastic cap here and run some epoxy around the side of the circuit board here your reflector and it will fit perfectly inside the lid of that aerosol can like so so it's really as if this uh, lid was actually made for this antenna it um, actually turns it into a very professional looking antenna and people just probably won't believe that you actually made this yourself so just a quick test of the antenna over Wi-Fi at the moment I've got a uh, rubber duck antenna on the Alpha card it's one of those uh, longer range type antennas that uh, you get from Alpha I've got the test router about uh, 60 meters away and it's going through three brick walls but uh, on the test router I've got a um, Celtic knot antenna on there so it's circular polarized so it's probably not matching too well with the uh, rubber duck antenna I've got on the Alpha card at the minute it's uh, signal is a bit up and down but uh, it should give us a uh, really nice signal when I put the uh, single turn helix on so I'll do that now and see what kind of signal we get so we've already seen a jump so let's move it around and try and tune it in a little bit because it is directional So we seem to have about 86% uh, going and point to the 90s but it seems to be uh, hovering around 86-87% so a big improvement on the uh, rubber duck antenna. So I hope you enjoyed that video and uh, you found it interesting and also got some educational value out of it. If you did please uh, give it a thumbs up it uh, does help on YouTube. And also it's uh, really interesting how much uh, power you can actually get out of uh, a simple small form factor antenna this is just a, a single turn helical most videos that you actually see or um, blogs etc building these they tend to be about 14 turns long but uh, a single turn helical especially with it being a uh, with it being a double helical antenna can really kick out that power and also with the uh, end cap itself the uh, top of a uh, aerosol can it really does finish it off into a professional looking product and uh, Cisco did used to sell an antenna virtually uh, the same as this one uh, a few years ago now I think they've discontinued it but they used to sell it for about £85 plus VAT so you know make one of these yourself for uh, just a few pounds a few bits and pieces off eBay and uh, a recycled end cap of an aerosol can so if you've got any comments or suggestions please uh, leave them below and again please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and hopefully you'll join me on the next one